Hey guys, my name is Eth Goes Boom, and welcome to my FNAF Ultimate Custom Night tier list video. So one of my fans on Twitter named Joey suggested that I make a FNAF tier list video, and I'm really glad that he did because honestly, I'm quite a fan of tier list videos. They've become really popular lately, and I'd love to make my own based on Five Nights at Freddy's. I've seen a few other FNAF YouTubers make tier list videos about various things about FNAF, like what are their favorite animatronics or stuff like that. But today, I'm doing one specifically around Ultimate Custom Night that has to do with the difficulty of all of the animatronics game mechanics. So you guys can see the tiers here, like for example the S tier is very hard and the D tier is very easy. And what that means is that the animatronics that have very difficult AIs, the ones that are very hard to defeat and counter in Ultimate Custom Night, they're going to go into the S tier and the ones that are very very easy to deal with, they're going to go in the D tier. So this video is isn't really based too much on opinions, it's just more to do with like, you know, the actual game mechanics of the animatronics, and just listing them to see how many of them are actually really difficult to deal with, and how much of them are really easy. So this video doesn't have really much to do with like, my own opinions on the characters, like, this isn't a video where I say, oh the really awesome characters go into the S tier, and the ones I don't like go into the D tier. This is just all to do with the game mechanics, nothing to do with my own opinions of the characters. I kind of feel like that's important to point out before I, uh, start this list. <laughs> so yeah guys, as you can see on the bottom of the screen here, I've got the icons of every animatronic that's an Ultimate Custom Night, and they're all ready to be put onto this tier list. So we're just going to go in order from top to bottom. So we're going to start off here with Freddy Fazbear. Alright, Freddy Fazbear, the star of the show. So how difficult is he in Ultimate Custom Night? Well, he comes down the left hallway, and he takes about four phases before he gets to your office. But the thing with Freddy is, is that he can't attack you, even if he's right outside the door, he can't attack you if the monitor is down. You actually need to lift the monitor up with the left door open when he's right outside for him to actually kill you. So it's actually not too hard to avoid him, and really, you don't even need to watch him on the cams to get rid of him. Because a simple trick to do, especially when Freddy is on 20 AI, is to simply close the left door every time you lift the monitor up to reset the ventilation or deal with some other animatronics. So really, you could completely ignore Freddy for the whole night, and just keep closing the left door when you check the monitor, and he won't really be a problem at all. But Freddy has got some other parts of his AI, like if you let the office rise in temperature and it gets too hot, he'll actually become more aggressive attack more often, which is not good at all. I'd say there's a lot of different techniques and strategy to Freddy, so I'm going to put him in the uh, normal tier. I think he's a normal difficulty character. So next up we got Foxy. <laughs> oh boy, I bet you guys are going to guess which tier Foxy is going to go in, and I'm going to tell you right now that Foxy is one of the most difficult characters to deal with in Ultimate Custom Night. He is extremely aggressive in this game, especially on 20 AI, and he does get into the office a lot faster than he does in FNAF 1, because when he's on that high by AI, he leaves his cove extremely quickly, even if you check him quite often. And yeah, he does have that whole thing where he needs to throw all of his body parts into the office, so, so that kind of does slow him down a little bit. But when he's on the really aggressive AIs, oftentimes he will throw a bunch of his body parts into the office at once, and he'll get in there really, really quick. He's very, very deserving of being a Death Coin character because he could be a real pain in the butt to a lot of players who are trying to do modes like the old friends mode or 5020 mode. So that being said, Foxy is going into the S very hard tier. He's very deserving of it indeed. <laughs> okay, next up guys, we're going to talk about uh, Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica. I'm going to talk about them at the same time because they pretty much have the same game mechanic. If their AI is turned on, they'll randomly show up in the office and kind of slide in front of you like how Toy Bonnie does in Final Fantasy Freddy's 2. So all you need to do with them is put on the Freddy Fazbear mask to make them go away. And honestly, I would say that Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica aren't really deadly in and of themselves because most of the time they're pretty easy to deal with. They take quite a while sliding over to the very center of the room to kill you but the way that I would say these two are deadly is that they are very good distractions. They're very good distractions and all the other things going on in the office like Night Marion appearing out of nowhere and jump scaring you or Ballora coming to the door. Especially Ballora because when I tried doing the 8000 points mode, Toy Bonnie or Toy Chica would always appear at the same time as Ballora and distract me which would get me killed by Ballora. So I would say that Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica are deadly but only because they're quite distracting. But because they're really easy to deal with, I'm going to put them both in the C tier. They are easy characters. Okay, so next up, <laughs> we got Trash and the Gang. 
Do we really need to talk about these guys? They're just a joke character that jump scares you randomly. And also there's a whole thing with Mr. Can Do where he blocks one of your cams if their AI is turned on. But honestly, that's not really hard. You just flip the monitor down again to move him to another camera. So yeah, these guys are D tier. You don't count them in any way. They just kind of show up and do their own thing. I mean, I guess you can kind of counter Mr. Can Do by forcing him to switch cams, but besides that, they don't really do anything and aren't really countered, so very easy tier they go. <laughs> They're very deserving of it indeed. Okay, next up we got Withered Bonnie. Now, uh, the reason why I didn't talk about him at the same time as Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica is because even though he has the same AI as them, he actually works a little bit differently. He actually attacks you way faster. However, he does appear way less often. Even on 20 AI, you'll be lucky to see him once or twice within the night, which I think is just to keep the game balanced, but yeah. Honestly, I don't really know what to do with him. Like I said, he shows up more than Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica, but he attacks faster. Just with the fact that he attacks faster, I think I'm going to put him in the uh, B tier. Because he's way more aggressive, just uh, appears less often. So yeah, I think that works. I think he belongs in the B tier. Oh no, how unfortunate. Next up, we've got Dee Dee. <laughs> I'm sure all of you guys know what Dee Dee does. She can randomly spawn at any point during the night, and she can either summon a random animatronic into your night that was previously turned off, or she could take one of the other animatronics that's already turned on and increase their AI, or she can summon a completely random, non-customizable character that for most players who don't know how to deal with them will be a complete shock to them and most likely get them killed. <laughs> so DD is a complete nuisance. The only way to counter her is to use the DD Repel, but you can't always use them because, you know, players don't always have DD Repels, but she is a major pain in the butt and can completely screw over people's nights. Do you know where she is going? She is going in the S tier, just on the effect that she has on people's nights, how she can completely screw them over. I mean, Dee Dee is kind of a wild card because she could just spawn in Trash of the Gang and not be that much of a problem, but then again, she could spawn in like Foxy or Rockstar Bonnie and completely screw up your night. So because of that, I'm putting her in the S tier. She is very, very annoying. Okay, so next up is Chica. I don't know about all of you out there, but Chica in this game scares the crap out of me. You know why? Because she reminds me of the core gameplay in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is the scariest FNAF game to me because of the whole breathing mechanic. You need to listen closely for quiet breathing, and if you screw up, you're going to get a loud jump scare in your face, which is going to scare the crap out of you. I hate listening out for quiet things when there's the danger of a loud jump scare getting to you, and Chica is just like that in this game. You need to listen for her pots and pans, which are pretty quiet when you're not checking her cam. Like when you're in the office trying to handle all the other animatronics, at the back of your mind you kind of need to listen for Chica's pots and pans because if you don't, she'll most likely catch you off guard and kill you. And she attacks pretty quickly too on the higher AIs if you leave her for too long. So yeah, Chica does scare the crap out of me, and she isn't a death coin character, so you can't get rid of her if she's active in a mode, which is really, really annoying. And um, so she is pretty difficult to deal with, but she scares me personally, but I'm trying to keep my own personal opinions off this list. I wouldn't say she's S tier, but I would definitely say that she is a hard character to deal with because she requires a lot of attention and concentration. So yeah, and she's very scary too, so I think she's A tier material. Okay, next up we've got William Afton, aka Scrap Trap. Okay, so Afton always appears once per night in the uh, right vent, and he makes a lot of clamoring noises, and when you hear that, you need to close the right vent as soon as possible to prevent him from jump scaring you. So, um, Afton, he's a weird one. I mean, he only attacks once per night, but he attacks very, very quickly. So yeah, you need really, really good reaction times, and he is pretty scary too. Um, hmm... I don't know what to do with him. I wouldn't say he's a hard character. I think, um... I'd say he is normal. Just because he's very random and he can appear at any point in time, and he can put a lot of players on edge, I think he deserves to be in the normal tier. Okay, we've got Ballora next. So in this game, Ballora works in the same way that she does in the sister location, but she attacks a lot faster in this game. So basically, you need to listen for her music box, and you need to tell which side she's coming from, the left or the right, and as soon as you hear her music, you need to close the appropriate door to stop her from jump scaring you. And she can really catch you off guard with characters, like I said before, Toy Chica and Toy body distracting you and possibly getting you killed or L chip or old man consequences there's a lot of characters that can distract you and get you killed by Ballora so she can be pretty difficult to deal with and again you can't eliminate her with a death coin 
Honestly, I think she's worthy of hard status, just because, like, with all the things going on during the night, Ballora can catch you off guard, and she does attack very, very quickly, unlike in Sister Location, where she kind of takes her time in attacking you most of the time, but in this one, she's very, very quick. Okay, so next up is BB. Okay, so BB is very easy. He shows up in the right vent. You can even see his face when he's there, and he doesn't kill you. All he does is stop your flashlight from working, and when you counter him, you get a Fazz Coin, which is pretty cool, but obviously, he's a very easy character. He goes in the D tier. Okay, Bonnet. Alright, here we go. So Bonnet is another very easy character. I mean, for one thing, she can only be spawned in by Dee Dee, so she's a very, very rare occurrence. And also, all you need to do for her is boop her nose and she goes away. And uh, she takes her sweet time moving across the office too, so she's not that much of a threat. You need to be distracted by like 10 animatronics for Bonnet to really get the jump on you. So, again, Bonnet is a very easy character. Okay, we got Phantom Mangle next. Uh, again, another very easy character. Phantom Mangle just shows up on your monitor at random points. And if she appears, you need to switch cams to make her go away. And if you don't do so fast enough, she'll appear in your office and create a big audio disturbance. But the thing is, if there isn't a character like Music Man active or Lefty, you know, one that gets triggered by noise, Phantom Mangle doesn't really do anything. She, she literally has no effect on the gameplay. She's mostly here to trigger Music Man or Lefty. Although sometimes if you're too busy dealing with other things in the game, she can distract you from things like Nightmare Fredbear or Nightmares Laughing and stuff like that. But it's very rare that that's going to happen. That actually did happen to me in a recent video, either the Chaos 1 or Chaos 2 one, where she almost got me killed by Nightmare Fredbear. But luckily I saw his eyes because I didn't hear the laugh. I just saw his eyes. So she almost got me killed. But regardless, Regardless, I would say she's a very easy character. Okay, so next up we got Circus Baby, Nightmare Bonnie, and Nightmare Mangle. Obviously, all three of these guys have the same AI, so we're going to talk about them together. So these guys are the plushie animatronics. When they show up in the right hall, you need to buy their plushie from the prize counter to ensure they don't attack you. So uh, the thing is... I didn't really know where to put these guys because there's a very, very easy way to deal with them. You can actually cam stall them by simply looking at the right hall cam while they're there. And as long as you don't switch cams or check the vent system or the uh, duct system, they actually can't kill you. As long as you watch their cams and cam stall them, they can't do anything. <laughs> they're literally useless. So the only way these guys are really a threat is if like Puppet or Toy Freddy or Foxy or Rockstar Chica or someone like that are active, like someone that requires you to check other cams, because if you do that, you can't do the cam stalling strategy. But otherwise, you can just cam stall and completely screw these guys over. <laughs> but if you're playing the game regularly, which is probably how I should judge this, these guys can actually be quite a challenge, especially when all three of them are turned on, because on 20 AI, you need 20 Faz coins to buy each of their plushies. And even with the boost in the game, like the uh, three coins and Rockstar Foxy, getting 20 Faz coins can be a real challenge. I mean, you can kind of cheese it and like keep countering BB and JJ or Helpy or Freddy or Vent animatronics to try and get as many Faz coins as you can, but still, they can be pretty difficult to deal with under regular gameplay. However, they're not the hardest in the game. I think they're quite normal actually, so I'm gonna put all three of these guys in normal because their gameplay is pretty, you know, it's pretty moderately difficult, and also the fact that you can cam stall them, but honestly, I'm judging this mostly on the regular gameplay. The whole cam stalling thing is kind of cheesing it, but uh, just to kind of balance out all that stuff, I reckon they're normal difficulty characters. Okay, so next up, we got Rockstar Bonnie. Now, Rockstar Bonnie actually has a very simple game mechanic. All he does is show up in your office, and when he does, you have a very limited time to find his guitar in the cams, so you need to find it, click on it, and then Rockstar Bonnie will go away. But the thing is, Rockstar Bonnie screws over a lot of people's games, especially in 50-20 mode, because like, if you're trying to do, like I said before, a cam stalling strategy, that's going to be completely screwed if Rockstar Bonnie shows up because you're going to have to switch cams and basically look for his guitar. And looking for his guitar kind of relies on luck because sometimes you'll find it on the first cam that you check or it could be the last cam. And if it's the last cam, you're wasting a lot of time trying to find this guitar when you should be doing other things and countering other animatronics. So he can be very, very annoying. And uh, he's kind of random too. Like he can either show up once per night or not at all. So he might not even appear even on 20 AI. He's the kind of character that can just show up if he really wants to and if he can he can completely screw you over he's kind of like afton in that way 
And uh, yeah, he's a death coin character just because of how annoying he is. And he is the bane of a lot of players' existence. And because of that, he is going in the S tier. It might seem like a weird choice, but just because he is a huge pain in the butt on the harder modes, he deserves to be in the S tier. Just trust me, guys. <laughs> okay, next up we got Mangle. So she's the first event animatronic on this list. So, um, Mangle kind of retains her thing from Final Fantasy Freddy's 2, where if she gets into the office, she'll hang from the ceiling before she attacks you, and sometimes it takes quite a while for her to actually kill you, even on 20 AI, so she isn't really that hard to deal with. She can take her sweet time in the vents, and by the time she gets to your office, she'll just dangle there, and might not even kill you, because she might take her sweet time getting to you, you know? So, uh, I don't really know where to put her, either an easy or normal. Um... Honestly, she's quite easily dealt with because with all the vent animatronics, she can do a similar thing like with Freddy, where you can just close the vent door every single time you lift the monitor up to make sure none of them ever get in. So, uh, but because Mangle has her whole stalling thing with going to the office and that, I reckon she's going to go in the easy tier. I reckon she's easy material. <laughs> okay, guys, so next up is L Chip. Very, very easy. His advertisement shows up on screen. All you need to do is either click the skip button or press enter, and he goes away. Very, very easy character indeed. Honestly, I think he was kind of a waste of potential in Ultimate Custom Night. I kind of wish he got a cooler mechanic, but it's a nice reference to the ads from uh, Pizzeria Simulator, so that's kind of cool in its own way, I guess. Okay, so next up we got Enid, another vent animatronic. So, um, I would say Enid's a bit harder to deal with than Mangle because he is the only vent animatronic that you can't really track. I mean, you can track him, but his face on the uh, vent monitor is very, very hard to see. It's very transparent. It kind of just flickers on the screen every now and then, where when you can clearly see all of the other animatronics' faces, Enid's is the hardest to see, and also he is quite aggressive. So so he does make his squeaky noise when he makes it to the end of the vent, which makes him very easy to tell when he's about to attack you. But unlike Mangle, if you raise the monitor, he will jump scare you straight away if he's at the the end of the vent so just because he is slightly harder to deal with i'm gonna put him in the normal tier oh boy toy freddy is next okay guys this is another character that i'm sure you guys know where he's going he is going in the s very hard tier him in his five nights of the mr hugs game can go screw themselves because he is such a hard character especially on 20 ai his ai is based on rng which is very annoying in and of itself he's a death coin character so you can just tell that he's very hard to deal with but yes, like, just the random movements of Mr. Hugs in his Five Nights with Mr. Hugs game are very, very annoying indeed. And if he gets jump scared on the harder difficulties, he is going to get you very, very quickly. So it's not like you have a very short time that you can kind of wait it out before he kills you and, oh, maybe I'll make it to 6 a.m. No, you'll pretty much get killed straight away if he gets jump scared by Mr. Hugs. So Toy Freddy is going in that S tier. Okay, next up is Funtime Chica, another very easy character. She's kind of like trash in the gang, she just flashes on screen. You can't counter her or do anything to stop her, she just kind of appears and distracts you for a bit. But honestly, her distractions are kind of pathetic, like she only appears on screen for like a millisecond. And there are some camera flashes on the screen, but honestly, it's still not really hard to see what's going on with those camera flashes in your face. The only thing about her that's kind of annoying is that if you have the uh, visual effects turned on, she makes the screen go all wavy, and that can be really distorting and kind of annoying, but she is still a very easy character. Very easy indeed. And in my opinion, she's another character that kind of had a wasted potential in Ultimate Custom Night. She could have been way cooler in my opinion. Alright, so next up is Barney the Bunny. He shares pirate code with Foxy. However, unlike Foxy, Bonnie doesn't kill you, but instead he screams at you if you look at him on the cams, and he completely disables your cameras for a short period of time. Now, Bonnie is another one which I don't know what to do with because Bonnie doesn't kill you, but if you look at the Pirate Curve cam when he's active, he will disable the cams for a very, very long time, and if other animatronics like Toy Freddy are active, that can really screw you over. So, I kind of want to put him in a low tier because he's a non-lethal animatronic, but um, he can be a real pain in the butt though, so I don't really know what to do with him. Uh, I think I'll put him in normal. Honestly, guys, I think he's going to go in the normal tier. Like, again, he could be a huge pain in the butt, but he doesn't kill you. So, yeah, he goes in the normal tier. I think I think that's good enough for Bonnie. Okay, so next up is Wither Chica. She's pretty much very similar to Mangle. She's a vent animatronic, and uh, when she makes it to the vent door and you let her in, she has a bit of stalling time before she can kill you. Kind of like how Mangle just dangles in the office. Wither Chica has her really funny thing where she gets stuck in the vent and can't get to you because... Apparently she's been eating too much pizza and is too fat to fit through the vent. <laughs> so because Wither Chica's got a whole stalling thing like Mangle does, I think she deserves to be in the C tier, just like Mangle. Alright. 
Okay, so next up is Golden Freddy. So, Golden Freddy's mechanic is pretty much the same in every game he appears in. He randomly shows up in the office when you lower the monitor. You need to put on the Freddy Fazbear mask or lift up the monitor to make him go away. Um, however, he does have the chance of catching people off guard sometimes. Like, I've almost been killed by Golden Freddy and have in fact been killed by Golden Freddy a few times just because I wasn't expecting him and I was trying to pay attention to like five other things and he got me killed because I didn't see him in time. So, I don't know whether to put him in very easy or just easy. Um, I don't know guys, what do I do? Honestly, because he's lethal and he can catch people off guard, I think he deserves to at least be in the easy tier, guys. I mean, you guys might disagree, you might think he's a D tier character, but I'm gonna put him in C tier just because he has the potential of catching people off guard and getting them killed. Okay, so next up, oh no, is Funtime Foxy, another character who I know exactly where I'm gonna put him, because he is a very, very hard character to deal with. And honestly, besides Chica, I think Funtime Foxy is one of the scariest characters in the game because... Oh my goodness, his whole game mechanic of you need to remember exactly when the hours tick over and be watching his cam, that, oh, that really shoots my nerves and really scares me. I hate that, guys. As soon as I can, I always kill him with the death coin because I just hate his game mechanic and I don't want to have to deal with it because it's so stressful. Ugh. So yeah, guys, Fun Night Foxy is going in the S tier. <laughs> okay. All right, next up is Nightmare Fredbear and Nightmare. Again, these guys have the same game mechanics. So I'm going to talk about them at the same time. Uh, Nightmare Fredbear appears in the left hallway. Nightmare appears in the right hallway. And uh, when they do, you can hear their laughter and you can see their very small eyes in the doorway stand staring at you. All you need to do is put down the doors and like go away. Uh, funnily enough, Nightmare Fredbear and Nightmare work in the same way as Freddy, where they actually won't attack you until you lift the monitor up. I mean, you can leave Nightmare Fredbear and Nightmare staring at you for a really, really long time, as long as the ventilation doesn't go out, and they won't jump scare you because their jump scare only triggers when the monitor is up. So they're pretty easy to deal with, um, however, you know, because their eyes are pretty small, if a player doesn't hear their laugh for whatever reason, like if El Chip or Toy Bonnie or Toy Chica or Funtime Chica or someone else distracts them and they don't hear it, they could get completely screwed over by these guys. But again, they are pretty easy to deal with, but not very easy, so I would say they go in the C tier. Okay, so next up is Happy Frog, Mr. Hippo, and Pig Patch. Again, I'm labeling these guys together because they work pretty much the same way in the game. So yes, they do share the same game mechanics as Ned Bear and Orville, but the difference is, is that all of these three guys are fooled 100% of the time by the audio lore, whereas Ned Bear is only fooled 50% of the time, and Orville is only fooled by 10% of the time, so yeah. So these guys are technically easier to deal with than Ned Bear and Orville. However, the only other difference is that Happy Frog is immune to the heater, whereas Mr. Hippo and Pig Patch aren't. But the thing is, if you put the audio lore in this exact location, there is literally no chance that these three characters are going to get to you. Like, literally no chance at all. So these guys are just easy points of the game. So you know where these guys go? In the very easy tier. <laughs> Sorry guys, but you guys are just too easy to deal with. Literally, no threat at all. Okay, next up is Helpy. So Helpy just randomly shows up in your office. All you need to do is click on him and he goes away. However, if you don't click on him, he kind of jump scares you and distracts you for a bit. But again, he is very easy to deal with. Okay, next up is Jacko Chica. So Jacko Chica is only really active if you let the office get too hot. And I think it's uh, if the office gets over 90 degrees, she triggers and she starts appearing in both the left and right hallway at the same time. So the only way to make her go away is to uh, cool down the office and close both the doors at the same time, and then she'll go away. So, um, hmm, so Jacko Chica is kind of another one that's hard to place. I don't really know where to put her. I mean, as long as you keep the office cool, she's not really a problem. Um, but yeah, she does take up a lot of power because you got to close two doors at the same time and you got to make sure the office is cool. So you got to either turn the fan on or turn on the AC or something like that. So, uh... Hmm, I think she deserves to be in the normal tier. She's not too bad, honestly. Okay, so next up is JJ. She's just like BP, but she disables the doors. So she goes in the very easy tier. Okay, next up is Lefty. So, fun fact about Lefty, you can actually cam stall him, just like the plushy animatronics. So, even if Lefty is like right outside the closet door and is ready to jump scare you, if you keep the monitor on his cam, he will not move at all and not jump scare you. It's pretty cool actually, but um, if you're playing the game normally and not using the uh, cheesy cam stalling technique, <laughs> he's um, he can be pretty hard to deal with because he's basically Jacko Chica and Music Man formed into one. He is triggered by both noise and heat. So I don't think it's fair to put him in the same tier as Jacko Chica. I would say that he definitely deserves to be in the hard tier. 
And we don't have too many people there, so we're not doing too bad so far with the hard tier, so let's use only the third one. Okay, so next up we got Lolbit, another non-customizable DD character, so because of that, Lolbit doesn't show up very often at all. But even still, Lolbit's got a pretty easy game mechanic. All it does is show up on screen, and then you have to press LOL to make it go away. And it's kind of disappointing because in Sister Location Custom Night, Lolbit has the same game mechanics, but when Lolbit shows up in that game, it takes up like the whole screen, like it's really big, you know, and gets in the way, it makes a lot of noise. But in this game, Lolbit is really, really small on the screen. It's not really a distraction at all. So yeah, uh, Lolbit's very easy, she's going in the D tier. Alright, next up is Mini Rena. Yeah, again, another non-customizable DD character. Uh, Mini Rena cannot kill you in this game when she is summoned, or when they are summoned, because multiple of them are summoned. Uh, they block your screen, and they make it hard for you to see things when the monitor is not up. So basically, they are a better version of Lolbit in this game. They kind of do better what Lolbit is supposed to do. They actually cover the screen. Lolbit doesn't really do that, so yeah. <laughs> uh, but still, Mini Rena, you can't really do anything about them. You can't counter them or get rid of them. They just kind of go away on their own. So uh, Mini Rena goes in the D tier. Yep, there we go. Nice. Okay, so next up is Nightmare BB, the only lethal BB character in this game. <laughs> so uh, Nightmare BB is a bit of an iffy character. You need to make sure that when he is sitting down, you don't shine the flashlight on him, otherwise he'll jump scare you. However, if he's standing up, you do need to shine him. Otherwise, if you lift the monitor up again, he's going to jump scare you pretty much straight away. So, uh, hmm, Nightmare BB is another one that's kind of hard to list. Um, personally, I don't think he's very hard to deal with, but actually I've talked to quite a few people that are terrified of Nightmare BB in this game, and I think that he is super hard to deal with, so maybe my opinion is a very unpopular opinion, but most people seem to think that he is quite annoying in this game and very hard to deal with, so I reckon I'll put Nightmare BB in the A tier. Nice. Alright. Alright, next up is Rockstar Foxy. Okay, what do I do with Rockstar Foxy? Because his AI is really weird, because most of the time he doesn't kill you, most of the time he helps you. His parrot appears at random occasions, you click on it, and Rockstar Foxy either helps you or kills you, but it's very rare that he's going to kill you. Even on the higher AIs, like most of the time, his parrot either won't show up or he just won't kill you, so... Ah... Uh, what do I do? I mean, because you can just completely avoid him entirely and not have him show up. Um... And then he also helps you, but I think just for the fact that he can help you, I'm going to put him in the D tier. He's a very easy character, honestly. Okay, so next up is Molten Freddy. Ah, we're back to the vent animatronics. So Molten Freddy is pretty much like Enid. Uh, he doesn't have a whole stalling time thing like Mangolin with a Chica does. He pretty much attacks you straight away, and he has an auditory warning when he reaches the end of the vents. And also, he can't be blocked by the vent snare, which is one thing that I didn't mention about Enid. Enid can't be blocked by the vent snare either, which I think is another thing that justifies him being in the B tier. So, Molten Freddy and Enid are pretty much the same in this game, so Molten Freddy goes in the B tier. Okay, so next up is Music Man. Uh, Music Man, um... Another difficult one to list. I guess he would be in the same tier as Jacko Chica because, like I said before, Lefty is pretty much Jacko Chica and Music Man mixed together, whereas Jacko Chica gets triggered by heat, Music Man gets triggered by noise. But I kind of feel like noise is going to occur way more often in the game than heat will because the heat is only going to go up if you actually turn the fan off or turn the heater on whereas there's a lot of animatronics in the game that can increase your noise meter but there's no animatronics that increase your heat meter that's kind of weird actually i'm surprised that scott didn't at least put one animatronic in the game that increases your heat but oh well but yeah there's a ton of animatronics that cause noise like funtime chica bb jj phone guy uh l chip uh, Phantom Mangle, there's quite a few of them, so I don't know if Music Man should be rated higher than Jacko Chica. Um, oh jeez, I don't know, this is hard. Music Man would either be put in normal or hard, because he does attack pretty quickly if he's mad on higher difficulties. Um, I really don't know guys, honestly, I think I'm just gonna throw Music Man in the normal tier. I'm just gonna go with my gut. I think he is normal tier material. I would say he's slightly harder than Jacko Chica, but I don't think he is hard enough to go in the A tier. Alright, so next up is Ned Bear. So because Ned Bear is basically the same as Happy Frog, Mr. Hippo, and Pig Patch, but he is fooled less by the audio lore, I would say he goes in the easy tier. Okay, next up is Nightmare Freddy. So Nightmare Freddy's Freddles will randomly spawn in the office. You have to shine them with the flashlight to make them go away. However, when you do this, you have to be careful that you don't shine Nightmare BB if he's active, otherwise he'll jump scare you. But the thing is, you only really need to shine the left side of the office to get rid of the Freddles in the office. Kind of like how you would with Phantom Freddy, so as long as you don't shine the right side of the office, and don't spend too much time in the monitor, you should be fine with Nightmare Freddy. 
And honestly, I think he deserves to be in the easy tier. He's not very easy because he can get the jump on you, but he and his Freddles aren't really that bad. Oh no, Night Marion is next. Oh, Night Marion is another animatronic that is the bane of a lot of players' existence, including my own. I freaking hate Night Marion in this game. His gameplay mechanics are very, very clever, but oh my goodness, can they make the game very, very hard. So he randomly spawns in your office, and you need to make sure that your mouse cursor doesn't go over him for too long, because if it does, he is going to jump scare you and completely ruin your night. And when you've got things like Toy Bonnie or Toy Chica coming in, and you have to put on the Freddy Fazbear mask on, or if Ella chip appears in your office and it's very very hard to see things night marion can get the jump on you and kill you very quickly and it is so so annoying so you know what he goes in the s tier automatic s tier for night marion <laughs> all right guys next up is old man consequences so he is another non-lethal character he doesn't kill you all he does is spawn a mini game in your office you have to press c when the fish goes over the middle of the mini game and then he goes away but if you screw up he locks your monitor for a short time so he's not very hard to deal with at all. He goes in the very easy D tier. Okay, next up is Orville Elephant. Again, the same as uh, Happy Frog, Mr. Hippo, Pink Patch, and Ned Bear. But again, he is harder than Ned Bear. He is only fooled 10% of the time by the audio lore. He is the most aggressive out of all the mediocre melodies and the most difficult to deal with. So because he's harder than Ned Bear, I'm going to put Orville in the normal tier. But again, with the mediocre melodies, all you really need to do is turn on the heater before you raise the monitor, and it affects all of them except for Happy Frog, but as long as you put the audio law in that certain place, Happy Frog will be distracted for the whole night anyway, so it won't be a problem. Okay, next up is Phantom BB. So pretty much the same as Phantom Mangle, except that all he does is jump scare you. He doesn't cause any audio disturbance. All he does is jump scare you, so he really doesn't have much of an effect on the game, and he's really easy to deal with. All you do is switch cams. So yeah, he goes in the D tier. Very easy to deal with. Alright, next up is Phone Guy, so randomly he will call you during the night, you have to find the mute call button and press it. However, the main problem with Phone Guy is, is that the mute call button is usually very, very small. Like, uh, Phone Guy is a non-lethal character, but sometimes he can be very, very annoying. He can trigger Music Man or make it hard to hear Nightmare Fred or a Nightmare. So he can be a bit of a distraction, he's kind of like Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica, but, you know, non-lethal version. I uh, don't know whether to put him in easy or very easy, because... It's mainly because the mute call button is so, so small, and sometimes it has a habit of spawning right near the monitor button, or right in the corner of the office, or right on the very side, where it's really, really hard to click on, or it can spawn like right near where Night Marion is and be really, really annoying that way. So, um, hmm, I'm gonna put him in the easy tier, just because sometimes he can be quite annoying. Okay, so next up is Plush Trap. Now, I would say Plush Trap is the most difficult to deal with of all of the non-customizable DD characters, and back when I didn't know how he worked, he got the jump on me very, very quickly because I was under the assumption that he could appear like on any cam, but he always appears on Funtime Foxy's cam, so he's a bit predictable. So honestly, I would suggest that as soon as Dee Dee appears, always check Funtime Foxy's cam to see if Plush Trap's there because Plush Trap does attack very, very quickly when he spawns. So just check the Funtime Foxy cam. If he's there, he'll go away and you'll never have to see him again. So uh, because he attacks very, very quickly, I would put him in the easy tier, because all you really need to do is check that cam and he goes away pretty quickly. So he's not too hard, the only difficult thing about him is that he attacks very quickly, so he's definitely not very easy, I would just say he is easy. Okay, so next up is the puppet. So I think the puppet is probably the easiest to deal with out of all the death coin animatronics, not counting Bonnie, because Bonnie always gets eliminated with Foxy, so they're kind of a package, so not counting Bonnie, Puppet is probably the easiest death coin character to deal with, and he is way less annoying in this game than he is in Final Freddy's 2 because his music box doesn't wind down as quickly, even on 20 AI. But yeah, in any situation, the music box is always really, really annoying. But in this game, I don't think it's annoying enough to be put in the S tier, especially because we have the global music box. The global music box makes it much easier to deal with the puppet in this game. However, if we didn't have that, if the global music box wasn't in this game, I would say the puppet is S tier. But because we do have that i'm gonna put the puppet in a tier the hard tier i think that's good enough for him okay next up is rockstar chica so rockstar chica is scared of wet floor signs so she can either appear in the left hall or the right hall so basically you always need to keep tabs on the left hall cam and the right hall cam just to make sure where she is and wherever she is you need to put down the wet floor sign in front of that door and she can't enter and also the doors don't affect her which is kind of annoying so now honestly the difficulty of rockstar chica really depends on the mode that you're playing sometimes she can be easy to deal with, sometimes she can be quite annoying. It just really depends. Um, like, if you're playing a mode where you don't really need to check the left hall cam, like if it's only Freddy active or something like that, all you really need to do is check cam 2, 
uh, for Rockstar Chica because the wet floor sign is by default on the left side, so she'll never get in from the left side. All she can really do is go to the right side to get in, so as long as you keep an eye on the right side and see her, just move the wet floor sign to the right, and as soon as she goes away, move it back to the left until she appears on the right again. So she isn't too hard to deal with, uh, but in other modes we need to do things like check on Toy Freddy or Foxy, or get Faz coins for the plush animatronics. Rockstar Chica can be very annoying. Um, so I would say she probably deserves to be at least in the normal tier. I'd say she's normal tier material. <laughs> okay, next up is Phantom Freddy. He's very easy, a non-lethal character. Just shine him with a flashlight when he appears in the office and he fades away eventually. Um, however, he is more difficult than the other Phantoms because he can actually get you killed by the vent animatronics or ones like Freddy that are at the door. Like, if they're right at the door, he can get you killed by one of them if they're about to attack you. So, um... He is a bit more annoying than Phantom BB and Phantom Mangle. He actually has an effect on gameplay. And also, just like Freddy, he actually appears faster if the office is warmer. So I would say, even though he's only a fan but non-lethal, he deserves to at least be in the easy category because he can be a real pain. Okay, next up is Rockstar Freddy. So you guys all know Rockstar Freddy. Please deposit five coins, all that stuff. When he activates, you have to give him five coins. Or, you can turn on the heater and make him malfunction, and then you don't need to give him any coins at all, which is pretty good, honestly. I prefer to do the heating method, as long as it's not going to screw me over in some way, like get Jacko Chica to appear. I usually will use the heater on Rockstar Freddy, so there's a lot of things you could do with him. He's not really that hard to deal with, but I wouldn't say he's very easy because he is a lethal animatronic, and also, like, he can distract you from other things. And, uh, yeah, so I think he deserves to be in the easy tier. He's not hard at all, but he's not very easy, that's for sure. Okay, next up is RXQ, also known as Shadow Bonnie. So, um, he is another non-customizable DD character, but he's another character that you can't really counter him or deflect him in any way. He just appears in the office and he makes it completely pitch black for, I think, about 10 seconds and then he goes away. So, honestly, he's not really that much of a problem. He's not really that much of a distraction, really. Uh, honestly, he's not that bad, but he's very easy to deal with, so I'm gonna put him in the D tier. Alright, so next up, we got another non-customizable DD character with Nightmare Chica. <laughs> so Nightmare Chica's got a really, really cool game mechanic. When she's spawned, her jaws will appear on the very top and very bottom of the screen and start to consume you, and you have to either turn on the heater or the power AC to make her go away. So, she isn't that hard to deal with, but it does take a while for the jaws to go away, depending on how much you've let them consume you. <laughs> so, um, she isn't too bad, but again, she can distract from other things going on in the night. Um, I would say Nightmare Chica is a C tier. She's an easy character to deal with. I wouldn't say she's very easy, she's just easy. Okay, next up is Scrap Baby, so just like Afton, Scrap Baby only appears once per night and uh, eventually she'll move and when she does, you have to give her a controlled shock and then she goes away and never appears again. Honestly, I kind of wish Scrap Baby would move more than once per night, but she doesn't, so honestly, because she only moves once and all it takes is a shock to make her go away and it's pretty noticeable when she moves, she goes in the D tier, unfortunately. Unfortunately, because I really like Scrap Baby, but she's D tier material. <laughs> Alright, so next up we got Springtrap, the original Springtrap. Uh, so he is the final vent animatronic character that we're going to talk about. Uh, I'm trying to think of where to place him because, again, he can avoid the vent snare like Molten Freddy and Enid. However, he doesn't come into the office before he jump scares you like Mangle or with a Chica, so he does attack faster. However, the thing with Springtrap is it's very easy to know when he's there because you'll see his eyes in the vent. But the question is, is seeing his eyes easier to detect than the squeaking noise or the laughing that Molten Freddy and Enid make? Like, which is more difficult? That's the thing. So, uh, Enid and Molten Freddy are in normal. Um, hmm. I'm not sure whether I should put Springtrap in easy or normal. Um... Uh, just because we can see Springtrap's face on the vent when he's about to attack, and also he's way easier to detect than Enid, and uh, yeah, he kind of appears in the office in that way. I'm gonna put him in the C tier, I think. Okay, so next up is XOR, also known as Shadow Deedee. So obviously, she's a much more annoying version of Deedee. So if Deedee is going to be in the S tier, XOR is obviously going to be in the S tier as well. However, she works a bit differently. She summons all of the non-customizable characters at once, and she always shows up on 50-20 mode. However, she can very rarely show up in normal gameplay. I've seen her once or twice in normal gameplay, and the first time I saw her, she scared the crap out of me because I didn't know who she was at the time. I think it might have been during my Freddy Plays video, but I'm not really sure. So yeah guys, there you go, we finished the tier list. Here's my FNAF Ultimate Custom Night AI Difficulties tier list. 
So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, guys. Do you agree with this tier list? I have a feeling that there's some choices that probably other people are probably going to disagree with, like maybe Golden Freddy, and maybe some of the vent animatronics like Springtrap, but this is just what I think. But yeah, I reckon this is a pretty accurate tier list, just based on the AI difficulties. I think you can't get much better than this. I mean, some people might swap around, like I said, characters like Golden Freddy, but for the most part, I think this is pretty accurate. Alright guys, let me know in the comments below what you think of this video, what you think of this tier list, and would you like to see more videos like this? Just uh, let me know we'll see what happens in the future all right guys so uh please give this video a thumbs if you liked it uh, please subscribe to see more content from me and i'll see you guys next time bye everyone